Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous videos, we found all of these various values. We found the X and the Y components of the reactionary forces at the support points, and we found the horizontal component of the tension in any of the sections. In this part, part two, we're going to find the tension between C and D, and we're going to find the height difference between B and C. How do we do that? Well, let's start by finding the tension between C and D. To do that, we're going to draw, hmm, let's say, a triangular shape of the forces acting on that section. We can say here that we have the tension over here, we have the horizontal tension over here, which is T sub naught, and we have the angle between angle theta. So there's my triangle. I may not know the vertical force here, but that's quite all right. The reason is because I know what theta is equal to. Based on the geometry, this being 1 meter and this being 3 meters, we took the R tangent of that ratio and we got 18.435 degrees. We're looking for T. This is T, C, D. I'll put C, D down. But we know the horizontal component of the tension in each of the sections because they are all equal. The relationship between these, we can say that T sub naught, which is equal to the hypotenuse, times the cosine of the angle theta, which means that the tension from C, D is equal to the horizontal component divided by the cosine of theta. Plugging in the numbers that we know, T sub naught, we found that to be 36,000 newtons. And we're going to divide that by the cosine of 18 Point four three five degrees and that should give us the tension in that particular section 36,000 divided by the cosine 18.435 take the cosine of that and that is equal to 37,000 37,947 newtons of course that's way more significant figures than we actually should have there but hey for that for this exercise, that's good enough. So notice now that that allows us to find the tension in any one of the sections as long as we know the horizontal tension, which is typically known if you know the X components of the support reactionary forces, and if we know the angle of the section. All we have to do is divide T sub naught divided by the cosine of the angle of that section relative to the horizontal. And finally, we're trying to find y sub b. Again, to find that, we're going to find the moment about point b. Since we know the distance from d to c, we're going to find the moment about point b. The sum of the moments about b is equal to 0. Why do we do that? Because that will give us y sub b. Let's see how that works. Again, we're only going to consider the left side of the, the cable. We're going to ignore everything to the right of v. Why can we do that? Because it's a cable, it's not a what we call a solid structure, and so therefore we can consider only any one of the sections in any of the cables. First of all, we have a sub y, which will give us a clockwise moment, that means it's minus a sub y, multiplied times the distance from there to the pivot point, which is 4 meters. And how about a sub x? A sub x will give us a counterclockwise moment about point B that gives us plus A sub X multiplied times the distance from the line of action of the force to the pivot point, which is this distance, which is one meter plus Y sub B. And all we have to do is solve this equation for Y sub B, which means we're going to move this across. This gives us four a sub y equals a sub x times 1 plus y sub b. Divide both sides by a sub x, so we get 4a sub y divided by a sub x equals 1 plus y sub b. And finally, by subtracting 1 from both sides, we get 4a sub y divided by a sub x minus 1 equals y sub b, which means that y sub b is equal to 4 times a sub y which is 10,000 newtons, divided by a sub x, which is 36,000 newtons, minus 1. So we get 40,000 
divided by 36,000, subtract 1 from that, and we get 0 0.11 meter, so 11 centimeters. And that would be Y sub E. So notice with cables, the problems are actually not that hard because we can take the moment about any point on the cable and only taking one section of cable, ignoring everything else. So this is how we find by drawing these triangles. This is how we find the tension in each section simply by taking T sub naught, the horizontal component of the tension, anywhere along the cable, divided by the cosine of the angle of that section relative to the horizontal and to find any height difference we simply go ahead and take the moment about any point of any section of the, of the cable totally disregarding the other section and then from that we can find any height differential between any of the points that carry these loads and that's how it's done.